Welcome to West Kentucky Student News. I'm Kanan Shanks, a junior at McCracken County High School. And I'm Madison Hayes, a junior at McCracken County High School. In our news story this week, Wilt Week has returned to Paducah for its 37th show. One of the world's UNESCO creative cities, Paducah is known for rich traditions in quilting and the fiber arts. The show and competition originated here in 1984. Even though the annual Paducah show is the highlight of the quilting calendar, Paducah-based American Quilter Society hosts similar shows throughout the United States during the year. The main show is held at Paducah McCracken County Convention and Expo Center. Quilting related activities and instruction take place all over the city, attracting over 30,000 quilt artists from around the world. The quilts chosen for the display and award showcase the beauty of quilts and as fiber art form. The Challenger Learning Center at West Kentucky Community and Technical College recently celebrated their 20th anniversary for teaching STEM principles to area students. Former astronaut Terry Wilcutt flew many missions for NASA and was on hand to help celebrate. He spoke at two special events at West Kentucky and he also came to Heath Middle School to share his experience as an astronaut. Our Haley Carnogan and e Evie Robinson were there. The Challenger Center opened its doors on August 16, 2002 to celebrate, Wilcutt gave a presentation at Heath Middle School to inspire students along with being a guest speaker at WKCTC's Astronaut Night. Terry Wilcutt is Kentucky's only astronaut. He has logged over 1,007 hours in space during his four space missions. Uh, the, the part of that that sticks with every astronaut is how beautiful the Earth looked from space. You come back with the feeling of just how fragile it is that the Earth is our spaceship and we need to take better care of it. While at Heath Middle School, Wilcutt discussed his experience working on space missions and his time building and testing space equipment before retiring in December of 2020. There's not a day that went by in my career that I didn't look forward to, to going to work and testing another airplane, uh, working on another mission. And you don't have to fly them if you're building the spaceship or you're building the science equipment or you're planning for the exploration of another planet. Those are things worth getting up for and going to work. STEM offers you, offers you a chance to do all those things. For all students interested in a career in STEM, Wilcutt advises you to put yourself out there and apply. Members of the McCracken County High School Media Department recently traveled across Kentucky to participate in high school media workshops. Media students had the opportunity to go to Murray State University and Western Kentucky University to learn more about media production. Media students had the opportunity to go to Murray State University and Western Kentucky University to learn more about media production. Sophomore Mackenzie Wilcher participated in the newscast super session at MSU. She and a select few of her classmates learned how to make a live newscast on a bigger scale, similar to a real career. I would never have, like, coming into high school, expected to be, like, this far into media, but, like, I love it so much and I'm so glad that I've been given the opportunity to come and help with everything within newscast and media all together. Photography students were able to participate in a nature photo walk around MSU's campus. While learning about the campus's history, students learned how to take professional photos with their phone camera. The workshop ended with a competition. Sophomore Marianne Portiano placed second. Um, physically, I took away a horse, a plastic horse, but really I took away a good experience and I got to learn quite a bit of new things with photography, especially using my phone instead of like a camera. Sessions over filmmaking, storytelling, broadcasting, yearbook, journalism, and more were offered to many students across the state at the WKU High School Media Awards. Junior Kanan Shanks is a returning participant of this event and uses this opportunity to learn more about his personal skills within the media program. Getting to take the tours of their f facilities and getting to learn more about the actual f film industry and everything else outside of school, like you learn things about like actual jobs, uh, it's, it's really good to learn about those things in person. You can see what the McCracken County Media Department is currently working on by watching their YouTube channels, McCracken County High School Media Team and McCracken County Media Arts. Many students who are nearing the end of their senior years are career ready and about to enter the workforce. Marshall County High School senior Cheyenne Chilton is all set to become a pipe fitter after getting the training she needed in high school. Here she is telling us how she became career ready while following her passion. I'm Cheyenne Chilton. I'm a senior at Marshall County High School. I'm a welder and I'm career ready. So I took it because I didn't know 
what it was, had no idea what welding was, but my uncle welded, my Nana Liz was an iron worker, my uncle, um, he did a lot of welding in his job too, and so just like I heard a lot about it, and so my brother's like, well take it. So I took the class, and now I'm a senior, and I've taken all of his classes, and I'm taking them again. If there were no welders, we would not have this building. If there, it's the tiniest thing, if you look around, everything that is metal and that is holding up a building or holding up just like a railway or a table is welded. The desk in school, welded. That table welded, literally half of everything in here has been welded on. There is multiple things in the tech center, in the high school, out in real world cars, trucks, everything. So if we didn't have any welders, nothing would be built, nothing would get done. I mean, yeah, we have electricians and carpenters and stuff like that, but like to hold big skyscrapers and stuff like that, you need it welded. It's definitely a male-dominated job, and so there are the chances of you getting hired would be more likely if you came straight out of this, I guess you could say, program or pathway. As soon as you graduate, there is jobs waiting for you. Just you're automatically going to get one. You just have experience, um, and it's fun. Not everybody's like, well. Something could happen, like you're not physically strong enough or fit enough to um, lift heavy things, blah, 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 blah. It doesn't matter. It does not matter. You can be the weakest person ever and you can still do this job. It does not matter about strength. And so, like, just being a woman in this, it's so much fun. It's spring, and that means many schools with greenhouses are offering plants for sale to support the FFA. McCracken County High School recently opened the River Valley Ag Credit Union Greenhouse to the public, Monday through Friday from 7.30 to 2, and Saturdays to 9 to 1, to sell plants and support ag student programs. Our plants are, are a very high quality plant. They're, they're more uh, affordable than the box stores and some other places, uh, and the money goes to help our students directly. So. Um, FFA students work very hard on everything they do, and so I think it's an outstanding uh, student organization to, uh, to support. For more information, you can contact McCracken County High School Agriculture teacher Zach Hobbs. For the first time in McCracken County High School history, the spring musical Beauty and the Beast completely sold out. Reporters Denver a Abel and Sam Tucker covered this monumental achievement, and theater director Miss Bowden gives her thoughts on the musical's success. Our, our goal was just to put on the biggest, best, just most professional production that we possibly could and I think we absolutely nailed it. Over the three show nights for the musical, 2100 tickets were sold, filling all 700 seats in the auditorium. Beauty and the Beast has been the biggest production ever put on by our theater department. It has been the largest cast and crew ever assembled to put on this production. This includes senior Addison Townsend, who played Belle, gives us her expectations of the theater department moving forward. I think it's only uphill from here. We've had such a monumental year, not only with our play going to SCTC and our musical selling out and having the biggest show we've ever had, I don't think we can go down. Like, I think it's only up. We've been going up since we started and I think we still have way more to go. With Beauty and the Beast complete, Ms. Bowden is grateful and looks forward to the future. Thank you to everybody that made Beauty and the Beast such a success. Um, we are so proud of it, and um, we've heard nothing but fantastic things. And we wish we could see it again, but clearly, um, you know, life must go on, and um, we're just getting ready to start planning for the next season. 18 students from McCracken County High School recently graduated to the 12th class of Youth Lead. Youth Lead is a program provided by the Paducah Area Chamber of Commerce designed to develop and prepare students for future community support and leadership roles in Paducah and McCracken County. We spoke to the graduate Mabry Purdue about her time in the program. I'm really proud of myself for completing such something that I've really never done before. I've never really been in any sort of leadership program and I felt that I really got out of my shell and did different things and ultimately became a new person. 
Youth Lead targets high school juniors from MCHS, CCA, Tillman, and St. Mary. Be on the lookout for applications next fall. It was a lesson in authentic Spanish cuisine in the culinary department last week as ceramics and as ceramics Ceramics instructor and amateur chef Jaime Romero visited the Culinary One classes. Mr. Romero is from Manias, Spain, a fellow UNESCO Creative City of Crafts and Folk Art. He was there to celebrate as an artist in residence with Paducah Arts Alliance, but he took time to demonstrate how to make paella, a food considered the national dish of Spain. He gave multiple demonstrations in Paducah, including a stop for culinary students at WKCTC. He also visited the Culinary One classes at McCracken County High School. The students then made their own and taste tested the recipe. Naomi Vieira served as interpreter. It was pretty nice, honestly. Um, speaking to someone in Spanish um, really helped with, like, I guess, like, working my personal language skills, and it was honestly really fun. While Vieira helped translate from Spanish to English, she was also able to explain the step-by-step -step process on how to make the dish. The McCracken County Lady Mustangs basketball team had a great season, but now MCHS is honored to house Courier Journal's Coach of the Year. Reporter Sophia Ranella and Mackenzie Wilcher found out more about this groundbreaking milestone for Coach Scott Sibbles. Coaches across the state voted for Coach and Educator Scott Sibbles. He received 25 out of the 87 total votes. Now having taught eight years at McCracken, Coach Sibbles has accumulated a total of 178 wins with the help of the Lady Mustangs. This also led to placing runner-up in the girls' Sweet 16 in the 10th year of the school. We went 35-3 and three this year. We went 31-3 30, and three last year. So uh, I think across the state, a lot of coaches saw uh, our hard work and play and, and what we did. Coach Sibbles recounts his initial shock towards the announcement and concludes that his team's hard work and dedication to his sport is what truly allowed him to be recognized with the title. Usually, uh, in years past, a lot of your winners come between Louisville, Lexington, and Bowling Green usually. Far West Kentucky uh, doesn't get a lot of love, so this is the first time in 40 years we've had someone from our end of the state win Coach of the Year. The McCracken County High School Cafeteria is using technology to not only let students, staff, and parents know what's on the lunch menu and breakfast menus, but it's also allowing users to sort the menu based on allergies and other dietary restrictions. After spring break, MySchoolMenus.com launched to organize the lunch and breakfast options in one place. Cafeteria manager Star McMurtry explains more about the new website. It will tell if something is gluten-free, um, things like that. So, it, I mean, it has a, for our nurses, it's great for them because they can pull up stuff and find all the calories and all the sodium and everything they need also. So it's, it's a good program and a lot of the districts are using it and so we're happy to be on board with that also. WKCTC recently hosted the Regional Educators Awards and Scholarship Program. The night is designed to honor teachers, administrators, and support staff members who go above and beyond. Nominated by peers, parents, and community meet members, winners and attendees enjoyed a night of recognition, reminding us all that those who guide our children every day in schools are invaluable. More than 400 educators, family, friends, and students were on hand to cheer and for and recognize the honorees. Categories include distinguished faculty for grades pre-kindergarten through fifth, distinguished faculty for grades 6 through 12, and distinguished administrators in the Cornelia Reese Unsung Hero Support Staff and Administrative Staff Awards, named for the wife of WKCTC President Anton Reese. And that's it for the first season of West Kentucky Student News. I'm really going to miss this. Yeah, me too. It's been really fun. We love, love everybody. everybody. All right, what are we getting paid? ABCs. Next time, won't you sing with me?